up on that big hill. Well, actually, you know, some people might say we're over the hill since this is our 50th episode, but at least we can still urinate. You know, we what? don't have any urinary tract problems. What? So, uh, 50? 50. So you can almost feel the heat. Yes. It's our 50th episode here on J&B on the Rocks. A we, very serious program. Yes. <laughs> Providing a solid <coughs> service to the community. Yeah. Yeah, by teaching you how to make a variety of mixed drinks. And we're now over the hill, episode number 50. We're 50 years old. You yeah. can see B's earrings that say, I'm 50. They're flashing. 50. 50. Aren't they cute? 50. Yeah. So um, we thought that we would, uh, in the spirit of all of this, show you this next thing that we're going to move on to here. Yeah, this, this is a kind of scotch that was given to us by a friend of ours here in the community named Jenny Beasley. Beasley is her last name. Um, Dimple Pinch, it's a scotch, and we're going to try it. Aged 15 years. Yeah, yeah. This is a, is it a single malt? It's a blended scotch whiskey, but it's aged 15 years nonetheless. So this is almost... Well, let's see. I guess this is like two thirds as old as we are, because you know we're fifty now. Wow. Wow. It sure tastes like it's fifty years old. Well, this is a fine, fine drink, and uh, you know it's a fine, fine thing. I think that we've been here for fifty episodes. I wonder maybe if uh, we'll make it for fifty more. Yeah, are, are we, some people might say we're over the hill. Now, are we just over the top or are we kind of in the valley far below? <laughs> well, in, in any event, in any case, let's raise a toast to uh, 50 episodes of JB on the Rocks. Um, here, for you, yes. And actually, why don't we just get going on this episode yeah. right after B makes his pronouncement on this drink. This is a, a very, very nice thing to drink. Thank you, Jenny Beasley. Damn, that's a little bit too much, but I'll try it. That is nice. I rather like that. Oh, here. Please, no. That's why we are, you know, this is our over the hill uh, 50th anniversary golden showers episode. Um, and uh, with that in mind, we're going to put out the flame. Um, 
by flushing. Five down, zero to go. Oh. Stunningly stupid. Stunningly stupid. Stunningly stupid. Stunningly stupid. Yeah. Stunning stupid. Yeah. Stunning stupid. Yeah. Hey, why go on? What's the point? Yeah. Why go on after 50? Yeah. I mean, we've reached our 50th episode here. We're over the hill, as 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 the saying goes. And uh, what's the point in in continuing? But you know, I I do have the sense that we somehow have accomplished something. As ephemeral and fleeting as whatever, you know, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it, it seems like we've accomplished something. Well, now, now saying that that we've accomplished something really, uh, that's that's not really germane. I mean, come on, uh, what we're asking here is not what have we done, but what are we doing? Why keep going? Yeah, I mean, it seems like really the only point of uh, going on is if you've got something further to do. Well, I've got plenty more to do, actually. You know, I know a whole bunch more drinks that I could mix here for the for you, um, and that's that's something else to do. campus here in Bloomington, Indiana, and we're going to mix ourselves a drink because, you know, when, you, when you're at the holy altar, the best thing to do is to, uh, to have some kind of drink. You know, uh, we're, this drink that we're going to be making, by the way, is called a bloody urine, okay, because this is, this is symbolizing the bloody urine of Christ after he was crucified. Um, so you want to just pour in all your tequila um, into, into a glass here. It should be a red glass like we have here because, you know, that's symbolic, of course. Then you're going to add some Everclear because, you know, Everclear is the strongest kind of alcohol that you can generally get. And, you know, Jesus was a really strong guy in, in many ways. So um, just add a half an ounce of this stuff. It's really potent. Um, and, you know, big things come in small doses sometimes. You know, just kind of like uh, Jesus and his penis. Um, I mean, bladder. I mean, urine. I mean, we seem to have talked ourselves into the proverbial hole, just like Jesus did, you know, because he got buried in a hole. But then he came back, and so he poured some, uh, some tomato juice, just a whole can of this uh, tomato juice. Brand is not important. It's just, it's just the, uh, the fact that it's tomato juice that's important. Swish it around a little bit and take a sip of this bloody urine. Mm, can I have a sip of that too? Yeah. Mm, that was good. Yes, sir. Dear Lord, please allow me to be intoxicated by life itself rather than by some big hairy guy that most people call God or Jesus or whatever he was somewhere. So here we are in a place of worship, in God's holy place, and the toilets aren't working. I mean, take a look at that. Wow. What's going on? Please don't use. I, I think that, um, uh, God, uh, you could do better. How do we treat our wastewater? Now, I can think of no more appropriate question for this show about golden showers, about urine, kind of about urine, then how do we treat our waste water? So here we are at Peck's Apartments. Now you can see that in Peck's Apartments they have a number of, of, of toilets God, they sure do. Um, where, where at least but. six people can urinate at the same time. And if it's men, you know, they could all gather around. We could have the potential of 20, maybe even 40 men urinating into these urinals at the same time. So the water goes down the pipes 
okay? And it comes down here into this pipe, as, as is implied here, okay? And as you can see, it goes this way, down the road. Now, assumably, these pipes aren't actually laying on top of the road because then there might be some kind of awful accident. It now, it goes off to this side into the grit chamber. Um, that's where all the grits hang out and, uh, and, and smoke cigarettes and, and talk about um, heavy metal music and, uh, and sit in wastewater. And then the water comes on down here. Now, notice that there is a speed limit on the water of 20 miles per hour, okay? Um, so anyway, it continues down here to the primary sediment tank um, from which it goes to the sludge treatment facility with this nice awning over the door here. Um, and then, uh, let's see, oh, wow, it's, it, well, it just stays here. Gosh, because see, it comes this way, so I guess... That's the secondary sediment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know what happens. This is where they take the water and, and, uh, and unbeknownst to the rest of the people, they just send it back to the houses, un really virtually untreated. Um, that's why they've left that part out, because it's kind of an embarrassment, a, a pimple on the face of our wastewater treatment um, system yeah. here in the United States. So hats off to pimples. So the question as posted here is, why do geography? Why do geography? Why do geography? Because what other subject lets you paste little um, peach rectangles all over the wall? I am doing geography because I like weather and climate and combining the atmosphere with the biosphere in one beautiful and lovely scientific endeavor. We are citizens of this community of Bloomington. We've got this university here. We demand access. We demand access to the information. God and damn the knowledge it. of the university. But we've been denied access. We can't get in. There's only one thing to do. Burn the fucker down. Burn, burn baby, burn. Burn, baby, burn. Burn, baby, burn. Come on, go, burn. Burn, baby, burn. Burn, baby, burn. Disco Inferno. Urine dance. Urine dance of the Zuni Indians of New Mex. I guess that's Mexico. Wow, number 136. One, three, six. Enter. Research collections. Bork, John Gregory, 1840s. Wow, it's an old book. The Urine Dance of the Zuni Indians of New Mexico. It's in the research collection. Well, we're just going to have to look at that right now. trying to study. There, that's much better. Thank you. Shit. Shit, I thought it was urine. God damn it. It's not here. It's not here. The mm -hmm. fuckers lied to us. Look, we're looking up for Z9B7. Well, here's Y97 and B94. It should be right in there. And wait. <laughs> Z... <laughs> The Urine it? Dance of the Zuni Indians of New Mexico. Wow, it's a little book. As a matter of fact, it's only seven pages long. Well, so huh. we can read this whole thing yeah. right here on yeah. JMV on yeah. the Rocks. Yeah. On the evening of November 17, 1881, during my stay in the village of Zuni, New Mexico, the Nehuichue, one of secret orders of the Zunis, sent word to Mr. F. Cushing, whose guest I was, that they would not, that they would do the unusual honor of coming to our house to give us one of their characteristic dances, which, Cushing said, was unprecedented. Soon after dark, the dancers entered. They were 12 in number, two being boys. 
The center men were naked with the exception of black breech clouts of archaic style. White bands were painted across the face at eyes and mouth. Each wore a collar or neckcloth of black woolen stuff. The hair was worn naturally with a bunch of wild turkey feathers tied in front and one of corn husks over each ear. Blah, 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 blah. Nobody gives a shit about that. I want to hear about the urine, goddammit. The dancers suddenly wheeled into line, threw themselves on their knees before my table, and with extravagant beating of breasts, began an outlandish but faithful mockery of a Mexican Catholic congregation at Vespers. They then squatted upon the ground and consumed with zest large uh, bottles, or ollas, bowls, I guess, full of tea and dishes of hard tack and sugar. As they were about finishing their, this, a squaw entered, carrying an olla of urine, of which the filthy brutes drank heartily. <laughs> filthy the brutes. filthy brutes drank the urine. That I ref just yeah, he loves these people. I refused to believe the evidence of my senses and asked Cushing if that, if that was a really human urine. Why, certainly, replied he, and here comes more of it. <laughs> this time it was a large tin, pailful, not less than two gallons. I was standing by the squaw as she off offered this strange and abominable refreshment. The dancers swallowed great draughts, smacked their lips, and amid the roaring merriment of the spectators, remarked that it was very, very good. So obviously that guy didn't think too much of the Zunis in their urine ceremony. So, but I kind of think that that's an asinine uh, way to approach things. So yeah, in fact, I think we have we, our own urine ceremony. Yeah, we? and we're going to do that right now. Many times I have faced down at that clean whiteness, gleaming nail-hard skin, have known various moods and voices at such times. It is male, universally human male. The act of looking, knowing the whiteness is not a reflection, but a defiance worth filth. I do not take kindly to such things. Purity, absoluteness, stoic cleanliness, I am male, universally human male. I look, I piss, I zip and flush. Embarrassed in the end, but oddly ah. redeemed. Well, the building's closed, but there's something of great interest over here. We wanted to share this with you. This is dedicated to Indiana University in, in uh, grateful remembrance of its hospitality and friendship. This was presented by foreign students in May of 1948. Now, you also notice that there have been uh -huh. some additions since 1948. Yeah. If you, if you look yeah. closely, you'll see on the, on the nipples, for example, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you Some can stuff. see that. It looks like yeah. someone put on a cigarette, maybe on her nipple, yeah. on her forehead, yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Now, um, mm. why do you think someone would do something like that? It's just not very nice. Well, obviously, the cigarette is a phallic shape, and uh, the burning tip is, you know, kind of, kind of uh, the heat of, of passion, so to speak. Um, and, uh, and so perhaps this person who, who put this stuff on this little uh, sculpture thing um, was, was trying to signify the, 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 the symbolism of the cigarette um, in terms of sexuality. The cigarette is kind of like the, um, the eggs that go with the bacon at a typical traditional breakfast. It's just kind of, you, you think, and the, the lighting of the cigarette, the harnessing of the flame, the, the subtle reference to incense, although tobacco certainly is not as pleasurable a scent as incense, is just, just the, the completion of that thought. It's, uh, it's a very, I mean, incense has been used, you know, you know this, we all know this, I guess, through the ages as sort of a meditative uh, thing. To, mm -hmm. to you burn incense when you meditate, you burn incense when you when you want to relax, or when you want to cover up the smell of pot in your bedroom at home, mm -hmm. um, and you know these sorts of things. They're they're all related intrinsically to meditation, and so is prayer. Yeah. And so, since I don't have an incense stick, I guess cigarettes would be the next best thing. Yeah. Hey, look at this. Pilgrim, whosoever thou art that enters this church, leave it not without kneeling down and saying a prayer to God. Oh, God, yeah. God. That God. For thyself, for those who minister here, and for those who worship here. Here, let me follow this first thing, though, and, and I shall commence prayer. Kneel down and worship! <clears throat> Kneel 
Well, boy, you're talkative. Oh, no, actually, the prayer, I think, is something that should take place in the mind, in the mind alone. It's a very private thing, you see. Oh, okay. Um, the prayer is something between you and God and not necessarily to be shared with your fellow men okay. or women. Well, let's go inside your mind then and see what's in there. Dear God, help me through this week. I'm so lost. I had a chicken once, but it's gone. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, just like after sex you have to have a cigarette, well, after prayer, considering they are similar activities, Cigarettes just real nice. So we're, here we have the World Almanac and Book of Facts, 1994. It's the number one national bestseller, you know. And uh, in here we have life expectancy figures. Now, um, year years of life expected at birth. This is on page 972, incidentally. So if you're born in 1992, in general, total, all races, your life expectancy will be 75.7. Now, for me, I was born in 68, which is kind of between 65 and 70. Um, and so if you want to get real specific, we'll go over here to white um, male, which, uh, which puts me at 68 years life expectancy. Now, that very clearly states that, well, it hardly even needs to be said. I'm over the hill. I'm moving to California. <laughs> wow. Well, it's, when I turn 18, and I'm going to go to art school, and I'm yeah. going to be an actress. Who are you people? I'm Julie. I'm Molly. Shane. I'm Brennan. Julie Penrod. Julie, Julie Penrod. Penrod. Brennan Golightly. Brennan Golightly. Of Go the Irish clan. <laughs> Molly Shimer. Oh, okay. And so you guys live here in Bloomington, all of you? Yes. Yeah. Born just... and raised. Corn fed I was born in California. In Is there anything special that you'd want to say to the city if you had a chance? The fire the police. Fire the police. Yeah. Fire the <laughs> anarchy, <laughs> man. We don't need no pigs. No, like anarchy works here. <laughs> Works better than no, um, other stuff. There are no gangs in Bloomington. No gangs. Well, thanks for laying it on the line. Yeah. So, here we are in, in another bathroom here on the IU campus here in Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah, yeah, continuing our quest. Our quest to find some place to hang out for a while or something and yeah. drink. You'll notice uh, that although this, this is a Beneke uh, toilet seat, we don't want to endorse any particular kind of toilet seat. And uh, you should not let this TV show prejudice your toilet seat selection in any way. So here in Indiana, the one religion that affects us all is basketball. It, uh, it weasels its way into every aspect of our lives. And uh, we just wanted to, to present to you the, uh, the, the temple of basketball here on the Indiana University campus. Um, this, this grand uh, chamber here uh, where, where people worship the holy ball. And uh, we're looking for a Coke machine so that we can mix another drink. Um, but all we can find is all these damn people playing basketball. So us. I'm going to go ask one of the authorities here where we can find a Coke machine, and I'll tell you. Last door on the left, that way. 15, 20, 25. fashion way. So, we're going to mix another drink here. This drink is going to be called a black bladder. Um, what you're going to do, god damn, things like, sounds like a growling pol uh, uh, poltergeist. Um, so, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take this cup of coke that we conspicuously got from the coke machine. Now, if you want to use some kind of other brown uh, liquid with, uh, with uh, soda in it, you can do that too. Um, so take that and, and add about an ounce of Everclear, okay? So there we go, there's our Everclear. 
um, you're going to need to stir it in a special way. You're going to do it with your black bladder. So what you do is you put air in it. Okay? Put some air in your black bladder and then put the, put the mouth of it down in, into the uh, liquid and then let it let the air out. <laughs> Look at that mess. And there you have, uh, yes, it is a messy drink, but you know, we here at JMB on the Rocks are messy fellows because we're committed to, to uh, the, the dirt that is life. So and don't forget to hang the balloon on the side. Yeah, yeah, the As bladder. A, a garnish. Yeah, the black bladder. Wow, how does it taste, Jay? Mmm. <laughs> There's only one good reason to drink that drink. Yeah, it's to get drunk. Okay, it's now official. I am now officially copping a buzz. Uh, but if I could, and I'm feeling good about it, I'm, I'm glad that this has occurred. Uh, I want to uh, take the camera actually from the hands of our camera operator, Jay's faithful brother, Alan, and ask him about his mental state. Are, are you two copping a buzz, Alan? Well, no, actually, you know, I, I got about uh, three and a half hours of driving to do in about five minutes. Um, I've got to go back to Lexington now, so I, you know, I... I kind of cooled it a little bit with the liquor because drinking and driving, as we all know, especially in this holiday season, is, uh, is not something to be done. Not a bright idea. No, not at all. I agree. All. Now, you're not, are you just saying this to make us seem like responsible people? No, I'm actually sober. See, take a breathalyzer, if you will. <sighs> wow. Yeah, that's the soberest breath I've ever smelled. You've always seen snowball fights from the outside, but what about being the snowball? So I think we ought to, to wrap the camera in snow, completely encase it in, inside a large snowball and throw it at one another. Um, of course, leaving a little space open for the, for the lens. And oh. uh, throw it at one another and... Okay. Yeah. Oh my God, look at that giant snowball! You know, I think I best get going, Snoop Doggy Dog. I'll see you later. Yes, Alan is leaving. You can see him there, walking off in the distance. But we will remain, Jay and I, with the video camera and a few bottles of booze because of our dedication to the community. You see, this is more about, it's, it's, this, is, this is more than two guys getting drunk. Let's see, this here is two guys getting drunk with the video camera. And there's a big difference right there. We hold in our hands one of the most prized possessions, one of the crown jewels in the uh, glory of our culture. And, uh, well, hell, there's a lot of things wrong with our culture, but is this one of them? Only you can be the judge. Write to us and tell us what you think. Yeah. P.O. Box 3241. And, 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 oh, Bloomington. Bloomington, Indiana. 47402. There, on the end. Good night, good night, we'll see you later. See you later our next week. Or maybe some other time. We've cycled our drinks through our bodies, and now we're pissing it all out in the urinals of Indiana University. Um, so I guess that brings us to the end of um, this 50th episode of J and B on the Rocks, um, this show uh, here, which uh, you've been watching for way too long. I just pissed like the goddamn Potomac River, really, out of my dick. Wow. Yeah, you smell like urine. So I must have gotten some on me. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know that's that's one of the hazards when you drink too much. Drinking and urinating don't mix.